Uh, our next guest is a distinguished journalist and interviewer who is one of the founding members of the most successful news program in the history of television. This Sunday, 60 Minutes begins its 21st season. Yes. Folks, please welcome Mike Wallace. Like you're annoyed. Did Hank, I no, 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 no. Oh, okay. I was thinking Hanks yeah. is a funny man. I very had no funny, idea. Yeah. He, and uh, people tell me that he's very, very good in the uh, punchline, the motion picture punchline. Uh, you watched the debate last night, I guess. Did. Yeah. What'd you think? Probably about the same thing that you did. I tell you something. I find it very difficult to imagine. We're supposed to be dispassionate reporters. Right. Right. And of course, we aren't. We try to report objectively, and so I'm a little reluctant to say it. I find it very difficult to believe that eventually, conceivably, Dan Quayle would sit down and negotiate with Mikhail Gorbachev. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem to make sense. And I kept thinking that last night as I watched him and as I watched Lloyd Benson. I would think that it would be more or less even Steven between <laughs> Benson and Gorbachev. Yeah. Yeah. But the other way, uh, it was in addition to which, he doesn't look like Robert Redford. No, he doesn't look like him at all. Pat Sajak. Pat Sajak, yeah. And, and, and I guess if, if we continue to play that game, Benson looks a little like former UCLA head coach John Wooden. I don't know that that'll get him any votes, but it was, that was the only observation I was able to cough up during the debate, by the way. Um, uh, Quayle seems like a nice enough guy. But you just, you, you want somebody to take him inside and say, no, no, this is not the line of work for you. <laughs> and yet... I wish someone had done that for me, by the way, too. <laughs> and yet, you take a look at polls today, and apparently he did very well with those who, uh, who believe that he's a decent possibility as vice president. Yeah. Well, I expect that, I really expected today to see a considerable breakthrough for Dukakis Benson. Mm -hmm. As a result of that debate, didn't happen. Yeah, no, so Benson really did not eat him alive. He didn't really show him up. Uh, but Quayle, on the other hand, didn't make any huge mistakes. Did he or did he? No. Yeah. No. Uh, I got the feeling it was a little like uh, the Miss America pageant where they asked them the questions, what would you do to uh, uh, find peace in the Middle East and that kind of thing? That's exactly right. And, uh, they, had, and they had it fairly well taped ahead of time. Yeah. But, but Quayle said that, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong here, that the first uh, thing he would do after he would say a prayer for himself and for the country, that he would uh, the, then get to know the cabinet. Is that what he said? Pretty a little well? bit like that. But I tell you, I thought that was a dumb question. I really, I'm, come on. Yeah. If you are, suddenly the president has died. You'd have to know the circumstances under which it had taken place. Mm -hmm. You'd have to know, um, if it, I, I wouldn't have a clue, nor can I imagine that anybody would have a clue. What would you do first? Yeah. And then to pursue it, not once, but twice after that, yeah. seem foolish. Uh, but I have a pretty good answer. You would change the monograms on the towels? Yes. <laughs> I think he said you'd move the stereo yeah, into the... That's right. That's right. Uh, now, tell me about the show. Now, now, I incorrectly said that you're beginning your 20th season. You're 21st. finishing right. your 20th season, starting at 21st. Now, I know uh, from reading a couple of books on this program that in the beginning, it was... There were many different time slots for it in the beginning, weren't oh, there? Oh, yeah. No, nobody paid m much attention to us to begin with, and it was fortunate for us. Well, I guess you probably would understand that because nobody paid a heck of a lot of attention to you. <laughs> but, but And still are. Did you see the turnout at Shea Stadium, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> we were on, to begin with, at 10 o'clock on Tuesday night, opposite the NBC Tuesday night movie and Marcus Welby. Yeah. Well, obviously, we had a chance, therefore, to practice our act in front of virtually nobody <laughs> and that went on for a couple of years and then they moved us to friday night at 8 30 and then some friday night at 8 30. So, it's yeah. hard to imagine a, a serious investigative news show attracting an audience at, at 8 30 friday. on friday yeah. that's right in any case some research not some a fellow by the name of oscar katz a wonderful little guy over at cbs said you know when you should put this on the air put it on the air on sunday night in mm -hmm. prime time we thought that they were getting rid of us. We were a lost leader, right. little prestigious, nobody watched. Well, he was right, because you see, there's an entente. You understand entente? No, no, I don't know what you're saying. There is, there is an agreement among the networks that they're either going to put on kid shows or news shows at 7 o'clock on Sunday night. And what was that word again, Mike? <laughs> In case and I ever run into Lloyd Benson, I want to make sure I know that. 
and suddenly it, it developed that people did yeah. begin. Then came the 1970s, the, the Yom Kippur War, and the gas embargo. Yeah. And nobody had any gas to use on right. Sunday afternoons and Sunday evenings. But don't you find it a little bit Please, may I just finish this a minute? <laughs> and... Is that the airport you can understand tonight. that. You, can. Uh, you made me forget what I was going to say. We didn't have gas to go to visit Grandma. Right. We had to stay at home because there was a gas embargo. Sure. So we turned on the television yeah. set and we were doodling and found us. So it's a combination of a really good show and circumstances that uh, proved conducive to the success of the program. But I've always found it interesting that you follow one game or two games of football uh, during the regular season on uh, CBS, NFL football. Right. It's interesting to me that, that would, uh, the football fans would also stick around to watch uh, 60 Minutes. Well, they love to see the scamps and the scalawags. They really <laughs> do. And we've had our share of them. Yeah. yeah. Matter of fact, I've been a little curious. I know that Diane Sawyer has asked you to perform on 60 Minutes. And you've turned her down. Why? Um... <laughs> I, 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 was, I wasn't sure of the nature of the performance she was requesting. <laughs> uh, Car Carson did it with me. Yeah. 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 Well, actually, that was great, too. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just feel like I got nothing to say. And I prove it here nightly. <laughs> Uh, and uh, recently you, you were married a couple, how long ago was that? A couple of years ago you got married? Mm -hmm. Congratulations. I haven't seen you since then. That's a little late. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Uh, uh, and uh, things are going great for you, aren't they? They're fine. Beginning your 21st season, things are going fine for me as well. <laughs> with the possible exception of tonight. <laughs> uh, anyway, and then I understand there's a couple of specials. There are a couple of specials. Yeah. And, and that's beginning, Monday night at 10 here in the East, Monday the 10th and mm -hmm. Monday the 17th. Retrospective. First 10 years second 10 years. Yeah. First 10 years, which is on next Monday night, uh, the Shah of Iran and Richard Nixon oh boy. and Vladimir Horowitz and Shirley Temple and Scamps and Scalawags. And so this will really be great to watch.